a commander of the skies. A whirlwind upon which pilots ride and conquer all threats. An archangel guarding our airspace and sovereignty. A war machine that cannot be downed. It is said there are two types of aircrafts, fighters and targets. This is the fighter to end all fights. The aggressive spirit, the offensive, is the chief thing everywhere in war, and the air is no exception. With spirit to spare, this is the mirage that soars the skies, patrols them, and is a true chameleon. Whether it be reconnaissance missions, direct combat, or intercepting and swiftly shooting down enemy planes that dare violate Pakistani airspace. The powerful war machine, the Mirage, has remained a steadfast friend to the Pakistan Air Force. After the 1965 war, uh, USA imposed sanctions on uh, Pakistan and the PF was the worst hit because uh, all our inventory was of American origin including the B-57s, the F-104s, F-86s, all the trainers. So it was a pretty precarious situation after the war. Mirage 3C had done wonderfully well in the Arab-Israeli war. So we placed an immediate order with the French, with the Oswald company for the Mirage 3E which was a more advanced version, a better radar. The first batch of pilots went to France for training in 1968, March. They flew in under the leadership of uh, the OC Wing Commander M.M. Alam. There were six of us, Alam Saab, Hakeemullah Saab, myself, Rao Akhtar, Farooq Umar and Arif Manzoor. Our return was planned to be from Montmorency to Italy from Italy to Ankara, from Ankara to Tehran and Karachi before coming back to Sarboda. M.M. Alam decided that we will make a fly past over Karachi. So over Manoda, the aircraft pitched out one by one and landed at Masroor. And there we were given a rousing reception by the citizens of Pakistan. And that's where people came to know and their morals went sky high. When 71 war came, I was commanding the Mirage Squadron. And uh, the Mirage Squadron had the ability to do missions during day, was capable of flying at night, doing offensive missions at night also. We had a siren for the first pair to take off. There were hunters, two of them, attacking uh, the Kesar. So we went after these two chaps and they split. So got to the guy on the right and when they were out of their attack mode, I let go of uh, a shot, guns. To the left wing, Root pay sparks and bit of a smoke. I pulled up and so he said, Sir, ye chadai also have go. I said, Go. So he let go and he fired a missile. That went and hit the aircraft, and aircraft broke into two. I went up in the air. I was hand 
with the Skeser sector com sector. I got in contact. They handed it me over to Krana Radar. He said, "We have a bogey for you. It is coming from on Yellam River from Khushab. It is heading towards Piyamali." I rechecked my switches, and my radar switch was on standby rather than on transmit. So the moment I put it on transmit, I got the blink, and that is the quickest lock on I had on the aircraft. It was less than three miles. I fired my missile, and it hit the left engine of the Canberra, and it just fell off. That is the kill I got. We were patrolling between Gujranwala and Faisalabad at a height of. About three to five thousand feet. The Indian aeroplanes were coming to the border, attacking our uh, troops, and also the railway line. Suddenly, I heard a very excited voice from the controller, saying that we have contact, positive contact with Indian aeroplanes, firing at our troops in Chhamb area. Then we made contact with the Indian aeroplanes, attacking our troops. and they flew underneath us uh, in the opposite direction so we immediately made a turn behind them and we ended up about 3 to 4 miles behind these aeroplanes they were su7s and they were exiting and exiting very fast i caught up with one aeroplane and i fired one missile and i saw that my fuel was very low so i was about to turn back when i saw the other aircraft very close to me because i was closing in very fast on to him so i just turned a little bit put my sight on the air, air, aircraft in the aircraft and fired my guns and after that i don't know what happened because i had to turn back very quickly without looking at the results of the shooting the indian air force history has confirmed that you have a positive kill in which the indian pilot died and the other pilot landed back at his base with a lot of bullet holes that means i had damaged the other airplane air commodore kasab tofail wrote an article in the defense journal and he covered the entire episode and of course gurpran usani made a beautiful painting and he presented me with a copy which is behind me on the wall mirage was the only very high performance reconnaissance aeroplane that we had so the mirages were doing excellent work throughout this was just before i think the war uh we had received information that the indians are uh deploying fighter squadrons to the valley in kashmir srinagar so i was told to take another aeroplane with me two aeroplanes and uh, uh we went to srinagar photographed it and uh, we brought the evidence yes it is active when we were making the photo pass you could see that there is a caravel transport aeroplane lined up and there was a net on take off you see you you can see in that photo run that the net is taking off and you're taking photograph click 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 and the net is airborne you can see that i was the flight commander of the only mirage fighter reconnaissance force i made 1000 pictures along kathua samba in kashmir area was orders for me ke naina coat boat bridge ko photograph karna hai at night with photo flash cartridges and night photography requires that you have to fly at 3000 feet wing is level close to pathankot 
यानी कि उनके शेर के मुंह में पंजा डालने वाली बात है नाउ व्हेन यू फायर अ टू मिलियन कैंडल पार कार्टरेज एट पठानकोट तो आदमपुर एंड हलवाड़ा पिक यू अप व्हेन फारूक हैदर खान वाज द कंट्रोलर सेड के सर यू your photo flashes have been picked up and uh, two mig 21s have seen you and they are closing in very rapidly in the meantime i look back and i felt ke piche ek very cartridge type yellow orange flame mujhe nazar aaya 6 o'clock position to me at night to maine kaha ye very cartridge to ho nahi sakta kyunki wo to zameen se nazar aana chahiye ye to hawa mein se nazar aa rahi hai then i realized that it was the eight all missile that he had fired and uh, the missile became bigger and bigger so i turned a little and then it overshot me from the left and shattered on the ground to janab maine dekha ki dusra jahaz bhi aaya hai uski bhi missile fire hui hai to i broke hard left and i went down i was at 3000 feet i went down to about 1200 feet to the terrain is 1200 feet ke kareeb so uh this guy he his missile missed me but he shot his leader off is missile se usne apna leader ko maar diya <laughs> strange especially talking about the uh, reconnaissance capability the aircraft contributed immensely uh, towards uh, its requ- the requirements of the country of the different armed forces in for the survey of pakistan to continually update the maps and uh, of course help uh, and this became very handy especially in in the mid 80s when there was an intrusion in in sachin and the enemy had to be located during 1971 the pakistan navy did not have any maritime rack capability nor did they have any strike capability of either the submarines or the surface vessels similarly the pakistan air force also did not have any capability of hunting out surface vessels and then attacking them either during day or during night so this need was felt badly in the uh, pakistan navy was immediately equipped with atlantic rakhi aircraft as well as sea king helicopters both of these put together had the asw anti submarine warfare and anti surface vessel warfare capability in addition the pakistan air force was provided with the mirages the maritime attack version and what we saw was that the reach of the pakistan navy and pakistan air force combined from zero it extended up to as far as 250 nautical miles all around the coast from the eastern end to the western end so that was a remarkable capability of the mirages which carried the exocet and after more than 30 years of service this role was then transferred to number 2 squadron which has the jf17 with a maritime attack missile where the reach has extended even further so mirages have provided a sterling service uh, in the maritime attack role also and they can truly be called a multi role weapon system of the pakistan air force the sleek design the robust and a very responsive engine enabled the aircraft to be used in air combat and uh, at the same time it's uh, characteristic where it would lose energy lose speeds in maneuvering allowed the concept of energy maneuverability to to be inducted into the air force i found that the take off and landing of mirage was the two most critical phases especially for the new pilots from 1990 onwards uh we were lucky to get a break when several countries were retiring the mirages Uh, starting with Australia, and then France, and then Spain, Lebanon, and Libya. So we overall most of these mirages, and hats off to our uh, personnel, technical personnel at the Pakistan Aeronautical Complex, who were able to not just overall them, but their general maintenance and repair was also carried out by them. And we were able to get 104 of these used mirages airborne. So all put together, 96 and 104, the Pakistan Air Force flew 200 Mirages. And other than this, there was some support available in 75 odd aircraft, which were not airworthy, but they were cannibalized for spares. So that's how we got our Air Force going with the Mirages for over 50 years. Uh, we right now are the only country in the world which flies the Mirage 3 and 
and it's remarkable that we can maintain and we can fly different variants of the Mirage 3 and 5 in the past year. February 26, 2019, India's misadventure into Pakistan's sovereign airspace by cowardly flying in at wee hours of the night. The immediate response of PAF fighters forced them to turn back and hurriedly dropping off their bomb over forests, hence missing the target. Pakistan took this as a violation of its sovereignty. Pakistan retaliate karne ka sochega nahi. Pakistan retaliate karega. Make no mistake. PAF when responds to irresponsible act, we may not always excise restraint. Jets from different squadrons took off to carry out a standoff attack against legitimate and pre-designated military targets in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Our mirages led the strike package, simultaneously engaging six targets but intentionally steering away with great accuracy in open space before impact. Indian military garrisons saw the might and metal of the 50-plus year Mirage sending a clear reply and warning, demonstrating Pakistan's resolve and capability. Mirage Ibn Factory started uh, uh, as a small project in year 1974 with the name of P741. The name of Mirage Ibn Factory was given to this project in the year 1978. You know, and the first aircraft was inducted for overall, that was GV1 uh, in year 78, which was later on produced in year 1980. You can appreciate in a way that uh, we have last year accomplished GV4 of this aircraft and GV cycle is after every 10 to 12 years time frame of it. OEM had defined GV2 as a last curriculum of this aircraft, you know, which uh, subsequently we brought to GV3, you know, and last year first GV4 aircraft has been produced. It would be important to highlight that we have over the years uh, over uh, repaired close to uh, 2000 plus uh, aircraft which uh, got damaged you know during uh, various uh, operational uh, employments and all that stuff using the same capability we have uh, uh, repaired two sab aircraft which even oem had uh, uh, you know uh, told us not to do that and uh, this uh, has saved a lot of uh, foreign exchange uh, for this country and uh, has given us tremendous bo boost that we can also recover big aircraft. So this speaks volume of the capability which this factory has acquired over the years. This speaks uh, tremendous uh, about the skill level of the workforce, engineers and technicians. You know, they are primarily our uh, source of pride for Pakistan Air Force. This is thanks to the PAF engineers who are looking to the future, constantly reinventing the machine and putting the aircraft through stringent quality assurance checks and maintenance inspections. Now, more than 50 years later, the Mirage flies on, ever the classic, defying its life cycles. This is the story of that very legacy the story of the magnificent and majestic mirage, Pakistan's formidable weapon that has defied age, defied the odds to remain an integral part of Air Force's tactical attack and air defense capabilities. The Mirage has time and again proved its metal for the PAF. The Mirage today remains an imposing multi-role fighter, upgraded with a whole new skill set, but with its primary vision intact, to strike deep into enemy territory with many an arsenal, and to its strike power, and bridge the lining gap in night air defense.
50 years on, Mirage's final chapter has yet to close. The Mirage's story is far from over. Whether defensive or offensive, to protect our airspace or to strike fear in the hearts of insurgents, the Mirage takes to the skies like a reliable, formidable friend. No Air Force has operated the Mirage aircraft for this long. No aircraft has served as a backbone for its forces for an astonishing five decades and counting. The country salutes and pays tribute to the incomparable, irreplaceable Mirage fighter jet. We owe a great debt to the Mirage for its astonishing journey, for being the longest serving steed in the forces arsenal, for being a force to be reckoned with. For helping secure Pakistan's past, present and future. Pakistan! Yeah!